Hey y'all, I know it's been a while. I've been working on some really cool stuff behind the scenes. And today we've got these Forces of Valor 132 scale die cast Sherman tanks I'm gonna be unboxing, so stay tuned. And I want to take a quick second to say thank you to all my subscribers and viewers who've been watching my videos. I know I've been gone for a little bit, but I'm back at it. I have a lot of good content coming soon. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and like this channel. It really helps me out. And Military Vehicle Reviews is partnering with Forces of Valor. They actually sent me these two tanks to review today. They have a lot of cool stuff coming out soon. So stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to be featuring a lot of the new stuff. Okay, so today we're gonna be unboxing the 132 scale Sherman tank, and this is the Armored Fighting Series by Forces of Valor. I've, they sent me two models to review. This one's gonna be the one we're gonna be unboxing, uh, but I am gonna compare this one at the end too. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it separately because they did have the different engines, as you can see on the back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and review these, and I'll also compare uh, the older Forces of Valor uh, Sherman tank that they had before Walterson's bought them out. So I'll show you the difference in the detail of the new models. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the packaging. Forces of Valor always does a really good job with their packaging. They have a lot of good information on here, as well as some good graphics as well. Like on the back here, you can see they even go into detail. This is the Ford GAA V8 engine, and it does have a stand that it comes with. They also give some good information on top about the Sherman M4A3. It's a little brief history. Okay, so this is actually an outer sleeve that you could take off, and you can even display it if you want. You could set it in the back like that. And it would allow you to display it with the information if you wanted to do that. And you can see the actual tank itself. And then you can see in the background they have a really cool image. It's kind of hard to see. But they did really good with that too. And then on the back it has pretty much the same information it did on the sleeve. Just a little less. Alright, so we're going to open it up. And you also have this little box here. This looks like an ammo pouch. That's pretty cool. Let's see what we got. All right, so in here it looks like we have the tank commander. And then this is a stand for the engine if you want to leave it out. We have a tow cable, a gun, and then I think these are to cover some of the screws on the base. Next we have the actual tank itself and a cool little graphic in the background. And you can display the tank on this base and they also sell a separate base or different colors that you can get to if you want to leave it on the base. And then lastly, it's like we have some instruction booklets. Yep, there's the instruction manual. Get information. We'll go through this later. I believe this is the card. Yeah. So I like that they include these. It actually feels like a credit card and it has a lot of information on the back too. Just some details for the specific model. And I believe it comes with a patch. Let's see. Yeah, I really like that they did this. So they included the patch for this exact model tank. All right, so now we're gonna remove the tank in the base. And again, this is really cool graphic. So I'd like to do something with this, but I don't know what. Let's see if there's a way we can use it with a stand. But it does come with these straps on top, which helps it with shipping. And this little plastic cover here, which probably keeps the turret from moving up and down during the shipment. And it does feel pretty solid. This is the first look here. Paint job is amazing. They did a really good job with the two tones. Looks like the dirt coming up here. All right, so now we're gonna open up the tank commander and the engine repair stand. Here's the repair stand here. It's got a lot of good paint and detail as well. Actually looks pretty weathered. That's pretty cool. We're gonna take out the tank commander. He's got his patch right there. And the legs don't move. He's designed to stand up in the tank. So pretty good detail on that. And we're gonna to go to the M2 machine gun. Again, 
pretty good detail, especially for this size. I mean, this is 132 scale, so I'm pretty impressed with the paint job. And then we have the tow cable, and this is actually made out of rubber. So it's flexible, you can actually hang it on the tank. And last we have the caps to go over the screws, the bottom of the tank. You have the exhaust pipes here, and then you have some of the tow clevises. All right, so we're gonna take the tank off of the base. All right, so once you remove the tank from the base, you still have this other little plate here with three screws you need to remove. And then this is actually what the caps are for, is they'll cover these little screw holes right here. So in this model, like I was saying earlier, you can actually remove the top and take out the engine and mount it on the stand. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and just assemble it as it is right now, just to show you what it looks like with the engine inside. Okay, so in the front, you have the little two tow clevises, which hook up to the tow hook, which you just snap into place like that. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the tow cable installed. I actually did end up adding a little bit of glue there, there, and there at those contact points. And if you haven't seen this glue before, I actually use JB Weld Super Weld. It's a uh, UV activated glue. So you dab it a little bit there and you shine the UV light on it and it hardens instantly and it's also clear. It's like you can't even see that there's any glue down there. And if you ever need to take it off, it's easy to take off as well, but it holds it pretty secure. The M2 machine gun is pretty easy to install. It just has this hole here and then this post that slots in like this. And it does move around like that and swivel up and down as well. So to put the tank commander in, you need to lift up these hatches here. And then it's hollow inside and you can just put them in and his arms will rest on the top like that. And the turret does rotate 360 degrees and it's really smooth. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you around the tank a little more detail. And right here, I even think these are the battalion and company markings as well. And this gun does move up and down, as well as these hatches also lift up. And this hatch also opens as well. I believe it was for the ammunition. Even underneath, you can see the details they have underneath as well. With the exhaust and also the tow hook. And Forces of Valor spent a lot of time actually developing this, but they actually made this tank with vertical volute spring suspension, just like the original Sherman did for this model. And you can see right there, it bouncing up and down. So it's basically independent suspension. Really cool. And I also wanted to mention that the commander's turret spins as well, 360 degrees. And you can even see his periscope they added right there. Really good detail. All right, so that's it. If you wanna leave the engine installed, and you can actually lift up these two doors here and see the engine. A lot of really good detail. You can even see the belts on the fans. All right, now we're gonna take the engine out. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So you're gonna to have to remove these three screws right here, here, and here. You're gonna lift up the top like this. Now I wanna point something out. If you already have the tow cable attached, you probably wanna detach it right here. That way it'll make it a little easier. And now the top just comes off from the bottom. And you can see this is all die cast, by the way. And then most of this is plastic in the base, but still really good detail. So to take the engine out, you're just gonna remove this piece right here with the actual engine, like that. All right, now that we have the engine out, you can just put this piece to the side or put it back in the tank. And then right here, you'll actually see on the side, these are where the engine slip into the mounts right here. These contact points there and there. And you'll just slide it in and on top like that. And there you go. Also, it does come with exhaust pipes that will go into the manifold right there. 
Now this is the same part that you would actually connect to the engine mount. So you can't do both at the same time. You're either going to have the exhaust pipes in or the exhaust pipes out. And I think they actually want you, it says in the manual, that you can leave the exhaust pipes in when you put it back in the tank. So, But it says don't glue them because if you want to put them on the mount, they would go right there. And so you'd need to remove these pipes to fit the engine in the mount. Okay, so now I'm going to show you that you can leave the exhaust pipes on when you install the engine back in. What you're going to do is you're going to take the engine, slide it through that little slot right there. These line up, but be careful these can break. And then when you're putting it back in, you want to make sure the rear exhaust of the engine right here fits in this hole right there. So you're going to slide it in like this. You can see the exhaust pipes in there. They do fit. Okay, so I also wanted to show you all they do make display base frames for this base right here. And I'll show you what it looks like. They have different colors and also some different nameplates that you can include. And they're for sale on Forces of Valor website as well. And here's what one looks like. This is my Sturm Tiger I reviewed. If you haven't seen my Sturm Tiger review, this is diecast as well. I mean, this thing is solid and this is an inside out version. You can actually see the inside has a complete setup, realistic. So check that video out if you haven't already. Okay, so here's the other Sherman that they sent me. And this one's really cool. I told you I wasn't gonna do the unboxing, but this one actually comes with the right R975 Whirlwind engine with a stand. So I'll show you what that looks like too, but really cool that they included these different models. So here are the accessories they included with this one. These are your hatch doors for the engine here. You also have the gun as well, tow cable, engine stand, and of course a tank commander. I think it's the exact same one. And then in here, you have another card. I love these cards. And they actually even have production lot numbers for each one. And on the back, it just gives you some more information, the difference between this Sherman and the other one. Of course, you can see here, here's the R975. And they also give you another patch for this one. I think that's really cool that they're doing this. And then the patch is very specific to each Sherman. So you see here 753 matches up with that one. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the engine out. And you could display it like this. I'm probably gonna display this one like this. But if you put the engine in, you have these little hatches here that lift up. And you can see the engine there. It also snaps in like that. And it's really cool how they did the paint to match. And then also this right here, I'm not sure why this did this. If you know, let me know in the comments. But this little part, let me see if I can get it on camera, lifts up like that. So I don't know if it does that just for like a shield, extra protection, or if it's to vent the engine or the exhaust. So let me know, shoot me a message in the comments if you know why that does that. All right, and this is what it looks like with the engine in and the engine doors open. I love all the detail in this one too. And then it does have a tow hook back here as well. Now you can't hook anything to it. I mean, I guess you could, but it's closed off. And then up top, you can actually lift up this door as well. There we go. And you could display the engine like this too. Okay, and as I said, I was gonna compare the older Forces of Valor Sherman to the newer ones. As you can tell, I mean, night and day difference. I mean, this looks nothing like the quality of the new ones. I think they use the same mold for the Commander, but even the paint on the Commander is just horrible. They did change the paint. They added patches here. And um, you can see here in this one too, I mean, these hatches open, but they're rubber. I mean, they're not even solid. These are plastic and they feel so much better. So huge difference. Um, they didn't have independent suspension on these models. They were just, I mean, they don't even... They barely even move. So if you're looking to get a 132 scale die cast, I highly recommend the new Forces of Valor Waltersons over the older ones or any other models. I mean, there's just so much detail, quality, the packaging, and everything. All right, and once again, thanks for watching my videos. If you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more videos like this coming soon, and I partner with Forces of Valor, so they have some really cool stuff, like I said, coming up. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you want to purchase one of these tanks, I put the link in my video description below. So go ahead and do that. It'll help this channel as well. So thank you.